What's up guys, DGFX here, coming at you with a new tutorial on how to do 3D text on fire uh, within cinematics. This is a new effect that a lot of people have been using and I wanted to do a tutorial today, I didn't know really what to do exact, but this new effect is coming up a lot and a lot of videos. So I was like, hell, why not just do it now uh, before, so maybe I can be, you know, one of the first ones to do it. Or I'm sure there's probably other people who did it, but I haven't really seen the tutorial, so let's just get started. There's a couple things you'll need to know. Uh, you will need <coughs> Autodesk 3ds Max 2013, which you search 3ds Max 2013, and let's see, 2013 Student Edition. Basically, 3ds Autodesk gives out free copies of their program 3D modeling software, 3ds Max for free. What you have to do is fill out a student information sheet, which basically you do in a couple minutes. Um, see right here, you just have to do a couple things. Uh, tell them about where your school is at all that. Don't worry, they don't contact your school. You don't have to get a permission slip and all, any of that signed. That's all you have to do. Then, also you need sin, uh, let's see, Fume Effects, which you can go to cgpersia.com create an account and yes it is a torrent site don't worry guys I've been using it forever wait make sure it's a farm farm CG Perja then just go to search and search fume effects 2013 and then right here this is the one I used and it's a really really simple tutorial you go through to get it and you will get it however it shows don't really want to Sponsor that if you want. You really should buy it if you can, but if not, then go ahead and get the legal version. But anyway, so what exactly are we doing here is doing the smoke effect and fire effect on text, as we've seen in MV sniping, uh, Ghost Team Taj. And it's really simple to do, um, it's not going to take long at all. And there's a lot of control you can have on the fire and everything like that. Now you can also do this in Cinema 40 using a, pro, a plugin called Turbulence FD, but I'm just going to do it the way I know how to do it, and that's with Fume Effects. This might be a little bit more complicated way, but let's just go ahead and do it. <laughs> so let's open up Autodesk 3D Max. And let's let it load, let it load. Um, I have a simple little, you know, uh, what you call it, cinematic and everything. And okay, okay, okay. Um, now make sure when you do the student edition, you get a 2013 edition. Uh, that's one that's, uh, what you call it, Fume Effects works with. Now, I already have, I already tracked my footage and everything like that. If you want to figure out how to track your footage, um, go look at my tutorial on how to do how to motion track and PF track. That's what I use to do all my motion tracking and everything like that. Um, so I'm just gonna open up pretty much uh, that. Uh, no, let me just import that real quick. So here's my tracking data, and that's just the the matte plate in the background of my environment. All that. And now here's my actual tracking data with camera and everything like that. And as you see right there, I have just a uh, test object of a mushroom just to make sure everything was working right. And continue. And just close that. All right. So here's the one we work with. Um, I go ahead, file, save, and just make a save right now to make sure. If you have any crashes along the way, it'll be simple as possible just to get back to your stuff and everything like that. So let's do fire text cinematic all right um hit alt w now a lot of people aren't experienced in 3ds max and the cod community and so i'm probably gonna have to go a little slower than most of my tutorials and just for the fact that i know some of my team my followers are experienced in 3ds max but i know it's not really a big variety program that everyone uses everybody loves cinema 40 it's a really easy program for what most editors use it for but now i'm starting to get more advanced into simulations work and everything like that 
um, I mean, I'm not saying I'm getting better. I'm just saying I'm advancing my knowledge in the 3D capabilities I have. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, one quick way to like go between just your viewports is Alt W. Just whatever viewport you have is what it like. You see, I have like a little yellow box around my viewport. Uh, in one of these, it will switch between this the selected one, and then the four point four port view. <sighs> All right, so first thing we do is make some text. So I'm just gonna hide this for now. Hide selected. Who wants to hide? Right, that's about good. Hide selection. There we go. Let me let me just un unhide all for a second. Click on the mushroom, hide selection. There we go. Now, you make sure you have it right here on this little ball looking thing called geometry. And you want to click on standard primitives. Um, in fact, no, actually, you want to go over here, this one, where it's shapes one. You want to go down to spline. Guess what it is? Text. And then right here, you'll have your text created. I just got to click on it. Um, I'm going to name it. TGFX because I'm a boss. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, now I'm gonna let's see. I'm trying to take this slope. So now you have your texture right here. Let's hit Alt W. Let's go to a different viewport. Let's try to line in the world. Um, let's just click on it. Move. Go about right there. Uh, I want to get to the center part. There we go. And now let's rotate it. Um, rotate it like that. Let's see, make sure it's 90 degrees. Then you can actually rotate the Z axis to another 90. Uh, 180 actually. There we go. Um, now let me go and scale it down. About like that. That looks good. So there we go. So I pretty much just have it sitting there, as you see. But as you notice, um, there is no, like, there's no, um, I don't have any depth to it, it's just a plain spine, spline, spleen, whatever you want to call it, call it spine. I'm just trying to get in the middle of this, the world right now. There we go. So now I want to click on the text, and I'm going to go right here to this modify tab, click on the modify list then I'm gonna go down to bevel and there you go it kind of fills it up um and then now I just want to kind of give it a little bevel stick it out outline this pretty much your height in your outline pretty much gives it an effect to it um see like right there I'm just leave pretty much on my zero C my level two I want a little bit of an outline Let's see if I can get this working right Mm, that looks good. I'll never get a one. See? And then if you hit the P, you can go into perspective mode, which perspective mode comes there and allows you to move around like this. Um, gets a little rough at times. Hold on, good. Wants to select, right? There we go. Alright. Now I'm going to go. That looks good right there. I'm going to leave it like that. Now I'm going to hit C again and go back to camera mode. Um, and that looks pretty good. Now, one thing right now as I'm building up the scene, after I got the text set up and everything, um, I'm going to go to the next part and I'm going to go here to the geometry tab, standard perimeters, and I want to go to plane. Um, and I'm going to make pretty much the floor of this whole setup. So, like that. Now I'm going to right click on it. Well, hold up. I'm going to hit M. To bring up the material tab, then I'm gonna go to materials, and I want to scroll down and I want to find a matte shadow. Um, what you call it? Material. The reason for the matte shadow material is pretty much it comes there and it only makes the material applicable to shadows. So this basically makes you allows you to build 
your ground right here, floor right here. Um, unlike Cinema 40, where you have to actually put a layer of material on the layer, then come there and click change it to frontal, then right click on it. And I think it was something uh, as a background, set so as a background layer. Well, that's pretty much the match shadow layer is. It allows you to just shadows to receive on the object, and that's it. And you cannot see the object, you only see the shadows. So it looks really good. Um, let's see, I don't have any lights in the scene, so it's not really going to affect anything. So let's now go up here to lights, and then let's start building up the scene a little bit more. Um, this is just something to start, I'll do it. I like to build the scene up before I start adding all the effects, so it would just be a little easier to work around with. So I'm going to go to a target spot light, and this is pretty much it's just a, a light that's targeted. Um, so it makes a really good sun. Um, I'll make sure this target's point is right here on the text. And right there. Alright, now my spotlight, I want it to act as a sun. So I'm going to want it way... Because as we see in this, um, chart, this cinematic, the sun is way back here. So let me just try to bring it back. Um, use some of the different tools I have to play with. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to go right here to the list because I can't really see my light too well. I'm going to click on the spot. Hit OK. Now I'm going to go over here to the modifier list. I want to make sure shadows are on. Um, and let's just see what that looks like first. That looks pretty good. That actually looks really good. Um, you can see some of these shadows in the ground. They're not too harsh. Um, definitely need to work a little bit on the lighting. Uh, so if we go to intensity, color, and attention, we can multiply it to make it brighter. Let's see. Let's double the brightness and just show you guys. You see the this has a little more bound to it. Um, let me get let me bring this back to one. I'm gonna click on the multiply right here, and I want to kind of like scoot up to where the sky's at, and I want to just pick a color kind of around it. Um, see how it has like grayish kind of bluish in here um, that's also another way how to get some good lighting is actually really just focus on getting some um, lighting of what the scene looks like so that looks pretty good so let's see let me go back to the lights and there's another light I want to add and that's a skylight Skylights pretty much it's just it puts a sky in the uh, whole thing and illuminates a sky around you um, So I'm gonna go to sky color right here, and we have these dark clouds around the map So I want to pretty much just put a dark color on it. That's all um, Okay, I want to make sure it has shadows and everything and let's render that now And there you go that looks a lot better so you can have your main focus of like your spotlight hitting it where you sun would then also you still have these a bunch of skylights around it also giving it a little bit of illumination so I'm gonna have to turn up the skylight not skylight I'm actually yeah we'll turn the skylight down just a little um, about 0.5 and let's see what that looks like there we go that looks pretty good and now remember the text is still not doesn't have any textures on it yet so it's not going to be completely accurate, so let's go to M. Um, let's make a com a little material real quick. Where's my just a normal material? Uh, I just have a normal material. FT1 morphers multi sub project ray tracer standard. There we go. Drag the standard material on the text, everything like that. Now. Um, also, I am in the slate material editor. There's two modes. There's the compact and the slate. Lately, I've been liking the slate. Some people don't really like it. Um, it's just your personal preference. So let me go to this ambient color right here. Ambient color. I want to put it. This basically is your main color of what it looks like. Um, so you pretty much put it in everything, anything you want. So let's see. I'm gonna make it gray. 
Um, you diffuse is kind of is like how it looks when like the color um what you call it your lights hit it. It's weird to explain, but just know your ambient your main color. Now let's see if I can get to reflections. Um, maps. Reflection. Now I'm just gonna bring in this environment map for the reflection. Um, and then I'm gonna turn the map down. Let's bring it down to like 25. So basically, it uses. Yeah, I'm gonna turn that off. <laughs> Something didn't work right. Make sure that's back. And now we have a problem. Oh wait, missing. Yeah, now we have a problem. Let me go back to eight material. M. Oh god. All right. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Something went wrong when I was messing with the reflection and all that. Um, all I did was reload the. If you hit eight, you can load your environment background. If it wants to load. Oh god. Come on, there we go. Your environment effects. All I did was reload this map right here. Um, but anyway, so we got pretty much all our text and everything, texture, anything like that. It's starting to look good. I think it's about time we start using a few effects. Um, so let's go here and click the geometry tab. You're gonna go down and click on fume effects then you can click on fume effects again and then now you can be able to be drawing pretty much a box which you click in one's place hold on your button drag slide that in and un unrelease and you gotta make it how wide you want see or not I don't know why it's doing that it's a P and then we'll really fix the box alright so pretty much the easiest way to explain the box is whatever whatever's in the box the fire is only going to simulate inside the box so if your fire if you need your fire like outside the box you have to make sure this box covers everything you want the fire being so we want the fire inside of the the dgfx thing so we gotta make sure it's high enough right here and make sure it's wide enough so it's a pretty good size um go back here hit camera and then yes yeah, so i don't need it to rise that high um let's just make it a little bit bigger z-axis so there we go it's pretty tall and everything like that well let me click back on the text and let's bring our text up a little bit off the ground make it kind of float um and let's see I'm gonna scale up my floor a little bit. I mean, like I said, it's covering up this truck right here. But like I said, the floor is only gonna render where the uh, shadows are at. Alright, now, so I have to make the box and everything. Um, if you go to a few effects. The geometry thing you can go all the way over here to this little like film roll looking thing it's called helpers you can click on the helpers tab and you can go all the way down to fume effects now you're gonna do a object source and you shouldn't like kind of make a little ball right here and it don't matter about size and all the matters about the curve and then you can go over here and click on pick objects then you can click on the DGFX or your text layer so now, if you go to modifier list, you'll see your object source to be FFX object source. Um, there it is, right there, on the ground. And then there you go, it shows the objects that's under it. Pretty much, fume effects use these little object sources, and when you gotta go in the fume, fume effects UI, um, it basically fume effects uses its data to know what objects does it need to simulate the fire on, and what objects does it just make the fire go around. And which means about going around is if you just choose an object and bring it right into fume effects, it won't simulate off the fire. So you have to use an FFX object source or 
particle source or whatever you whatever type of source you want your fire to burn from um, you have to choose that so it knows that it sources from there and then you can give it a couple other little details on the object source of what of how you want it to simulate <clears throat> so now you can go back here and just click on the box the big box then you go down right here to open fume effect UI now the first thing we're going to do is go over here and change your paths to where you want your thing to simulate because the default place to simulate is on your hard drive but like me I use a SSD as a hard drive and some of these simulations can get up to about 300 400 gigabytes just a simulation of the smoke burning so I have a scratch hard drive just separate for that so we're gonna make a new folder uh, text tutorial and like this is the, this doesn't have to be organized like this is pretty much a hard drive where you can just keep dumping files on you never gonna need these files again but your fume effects uses those files while you're simulating so it's not, it's files you don't need but same time if you're using fume effects with it you're gonna need those files just during the duration of that project that's what they call scratch files all right then you can get your default then you're gonna do your wavelet and then you're gonna do your retimer and your illumination map we really don't need to worry about it right now Let's see one second I'm trying to do a quick text message yep And if you look up here, it shows spacing and all that. Um, right now we have nothing for the sim, so we're gonna go over here to object source. What we're gonna do is pick object. I'm gonna go over here to the list, and then I'm gonna choose FF FFX object source. Hit pick, and it'll show the objects like inside of that object source is the text. Um, yeah. So now we're gonna here. We're gonna just do a quick, dirty simulation. Which I mean by that is pretty much just a quick simulation to see what everything looks like. Um, so you're gonna hit play. You then if you go right here to open previous window, preview window, it'll give you this. And sometimes you're, and then you can open this a little big. This is just a preview window. This is not the final simulation. And look how bad that is. <laughs> I know the first time I ran a fume effect simulation, I didn't know anything about the plugin, and so I learned a lot more about it. Uh, first simulation was just like this, and I pretty much was like, "Well, this is nowhere near real quality fire." So I basically closed Adobe. I mean, 3ds Max for about a weekend until I realized there's a lot of other stuff you have to do. So there you go. That's your rough simulation. So I said, "Quick, dirty simulation." If you pre-render, there you go. But it's pretty cool here is you can see that <coughs> the DJFX, the fire's coming off the DJFX. This is why I like to do just one little test simulation. And then um, it doesn't look good right now because none of the fires receiving any of our light data. So we can go over here to illumination. I'm gonna pick a light. Again, go for our list. We have two lights, so I'm gonna hit control A, make sure they're both selected, hit, hit apply. Then I'm gonna go here to multiple scare scattering and we're gonna play those settings a little bit later. But just turn it on for now. Basically, multiple scattering basically allows the lights to be uh, lights to affect the fire of how the fire looks and not just give it shadows. So now we're gonna go first thing we do is let's go over here to the general general tab. Now here's where it's gonna get tricky. This is where what type of computer you have is really gonna bring down your performance of how good the fire looks. Um, one thing, this does not count of, count on rely on a graphics card. It replies requires all about the processor. So the spacing is pretty much how much spacing is in between each particle, and how many particles can be simulated off that one object. So smaller saving, spacing, more particles what do you get now better fire so we're gonna try something we're gonna start off with 0.5 and as we see the simulation is up to 16 megabytes rendered up to 9 megabytes so we're gonna bring it down even more 
or as you see it quickly brings it all the way up so let's just try something really to show you right there 0.1 spacing 1.9 gigabytes so let's just try that let's start that simulation and as you see right there the fire is a lot more detailed actually two more detailed it looks like when you turn up the sharpen really 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 high up on a um, adjustment layer on like After Effects everything gets really 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 glitchy together it just doesn't look it looks really blocky and choppy and everything like that <sighs> yep I should see it's going 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 <laughs> um but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to turn the spacing a lot higher so I don't have to sit here. Simulations is definitely something you're going to have to be patient with. If you're really patient with it, you're going to get better simulations. Um, if not, then I mean you're going to be getting simulations like we first saw. So let's just change up to 0.5. Let's see what that looks like. You see, it's a, it's a big difference. Um, I'm trying to find something in between right now, just for now. This is 240 megabytes. I think that'd be good enough for now. There you go, point three. Give it a second, let's sim. I'll try to see a little bit of the, the shadows on the ground. Let's see, let's go over to. Yeah, let's go up right now. Alright, so I'm gonna pre render, render. see the fire is definitely gonna look a little different in the pre-render video it's like me ash choppy but you still want to get that really good fire looking on your text so let's go to simulation there's a lot of stuff you can play with quality pump that up don't worry it's not what you think <laughs> Um, that's the first thing I thought of. I put the quality to 10. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get some good as far. Never really thought about what you call it. Um, never really thought too much about spacing at the time. Now, max veneration, something you really need to play with too much. Let's just put it at 120 for now. It just helps a little bit with the um, simulation. Let's hit stop. Um, make sure you hit stop, then don't just start mixing settings while it's previewing or it's gonna <laughs> burn up your computer instead of a simulation see like this is just a difference what we what we, do, we first got and now what we got now it's a lot more detailed and everything um I don't really need to worry about this right here uh, gravity that's pretty much how much the you know mm -hmm. I'm sure that's really really simple to everyone I'm going to turn this up actually a little bit because this fire is just rocketing high. And yes, it's going to affect um, how fast your fire pretty much shoots up. So like, I don't know, let's just do something really crazy. 10. <laughs> I might be wrong. This fire wants to jet the hell out of there. Let's actually try opposite. Yeah, fire goes a little bit slower. We're just gonna leave it at one. We're not really gonna affect that right now. <sighs> Vorticity is kind of like velocity. Um, let's try one right there. Let's just leave it at one right there. That looks pretty good. It's kind of like the velocity of the fire and everything. It controls a good bit of how it moves. Um, X turbulence. Now here's where this turbulence noise and X turbulence is gonna work. Again, when I was a new about this, I kind of thought, I didn't really pay attention to turbulence noise right here. I just thought, ooh, that's how the fire's going to look. If I take the scale all the way down, it's going to give me better quality. 
not at the moment. So basically, this little texture right here, it's gonna overlay it over this whole file right here. And then it's gonna kind of like use it as a displacent, displacent map. And it's going to move it around that displacement map. So if I turn it like X turbulence on, let's put on one. Watch how much different it'll be. And as you see right there, that doesn't look like fire anymore. It looks like it'd be pretty, pretty cool to do it like at the beginning of explosion and really show that energy. But for a simple like little fire we're going for, we're not really going for something really big or booming. We're going for just something simple, like a little campfire. So we're gonna turn that off for right now. And then we'll play with it after. Now blocking sides, we can turn that one on plus C. Basically what it does is it kind of gives it a little bit more 3D depth, the fire. And like when it hits the ground, it spreads out and actually it doesn't just like hit the ground and it, it it's weird. I'll have to show you in a different way. A nip ignition temperature burn rate. This is how fast your fire burns. So let's turn on like 15. You see, it kind of dies off a little quicker than like if I put it on like 50. See, that looks pretty good. See, the higher the burn rate is how fast. The fire's gonna burn out. So, that's it. Stop. If you want a really like small set of fire, um, you don't really want much fire. Like, look, too much fire is just all smoke. And let's go back down to burn rate. So, I was really liking 50. How about like 60? 60 was looking, oh, uh, nope, and 60. How about 50? Let's just go back to 50. Alright, now it's doing some crazy shit. Oh, well, no, why? I'm playing with ignition temperature. <laughs> Let's go to burn rate 60. You see, just you can barely see it just coming off the DG effects of each letter, and that looks really good. Now here's fire create smoke. Basically the fire, the smoke ain't simulated off the texture. It's simulated at the end of the fire. So let's turn it on. Let's turn smoke density on to about 50 for now. We're gonna go to rendering and then we're gonna go over here to smoke color. Um, make sure you right click on gradient. No, right click on the color and keyless mode. Click on it and let's bring a good dark smoke right there. See, now you can really see that smoke. Um, and you know, let's play with the fire a little bit. Um, let's see what that looks like. You see, right now I just have way too much smoke in the scene. Uh, I just have two different sources of smoke, so it's just covering this whole source down. You can barely see the fire. So we can actually kind of exit out of all of fume, not really exit out of fume effects. We can go over here to this little object source thing we made, and you are gonna turn off. The smoke, Let's see if I did it right. Channel is disabled, so no more smoke. Then we're gonna go back to Fume Effects, right here, and let's simulate that. So as just we, it's coming off just a fire. As you see, it looks a little different, but remember we have so much smoke coming off because we set it such a high number, it's gonna look a little different. So let's go back to simulation. Let's go down. To smoke density, let's bring it more to like 10. Because let's see, see, that looks a lot better. It's not as crazy, but still, it's just a little too much smoke for my liking. Um, if you turn it all the way down to one, you better get any. Let's see, that actually looks pretty good. I like that just for the scene. I'm gonna leave that. All right. And then let's go a little bit down. Um, smoke bone buoyancy is pretty much how much it puffs up. So let's turn it all the way up to two. Let's see what we get. 
can see it's puffing up a little bit more on top. You can barely see it. Again, crazy ass number. Uh, where is it? Right there. <laughs> Let's do 20. I don't know. You can barely see it, but the thing is because just the simulation is so small. Um, you can see it puffing up a little bit on top, but eh, not really what I like. So, uh, five. so let's go back down. Go so Bonzi, I'm pretty much just gonna leave that too. It's not really affecting too much. Um, this is how much it like strength of how much it uses. So let's turn that up. Um, let's turn up the diffusion up a little bit actually. Let's turn up to one. Um, one. Let me see how much the smoke. Whoa. <laughs> the smoke completely just like illuminates the whole thing. Uh, just a big puff. It just doesn't look good. So I'm going to go back to that dispension. Let's go back, put that back to one. Um, let's see how much different that looks. Eh, not liking it. There we go. That looks good. I right to restart it. And that's pretty much that's all that's do it. Wave of turbulence is pretty much another it's another type of like smoothing everything down. It takes a lot longer to do everything. Um let's see if I remember how to I don't really ever use it, so um I'm actually gonna have to go back to that FX object. Click on it. I think that's where it is. Turbulence down here. Let's turn this up to one. All right, and back to the box. You know, normal thing. Simulate that. It's looking pretty good. I'm liking this. Um, I mean, it's not no Hollywood fire, but we're just doing a simple cinematic. And let's actually do a little quick, quick test render in this. We haven't done test render in a while. As you see, the smoke, this, um, what you call it, blending out into the scene. See the fire right here? Probably need to turn up the fire to the uh, spacing up a little bit. Alright, so let's turn on this turbulence. Let's, let's try and see what we can get with this turbulence. Um, let me turn up the scale. Now, it's going to do it for the, just 10 frames. So let's do the scale. Let's do it to 20. Um, I don't really know how to affect it too much, but we're going to play around. See, it's not as affecting it as much uh, with a bigger scale and a really low turbulence. Let's hit stop on that. Let's turn it to one turbulence. And then now try it. Oh, God. Like it's like it's doing the wave. So let's turn on the X turbulence. Let's go down to point two. So I want just a little bit of turbulence just so it don't look um I don't want it to look too like set foot in place, like stale, like just normal fire going up. I wanna have a little abstractiveness to it. Point one five. Let's try this. See, it gives a little bit of a wave to it, and then it just it dies off. That's all I like. Oh, Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause on this tutorial. I'm going to let it simulate it all. And we're going to see what we're kind of working with right now. Alright, guys, we are back. All of my... What's call it? Oh, the simulation is done, and this is what we got right here. It looks pretty darn good. I'm really impressed with it. It came out really good. Um... Let's see if we go back to our NV team Dosh. Now, I know I didn't explain everything to you guys, but that's the thing with these tutorials. I don't want to simply, simply put it on your plate and y'all uh, just copy the exact. Uh, some stuff I didn't cover over was the smoke at the beginning. Let's go to it. That's it. No, that's not it. And the smoke part, right here. But, if you paid attention to this tutorial very well, um, 
you will have learned some of the stuff that I taught. <laughs> um, as in pretty much, just put your mind to what I have taught in this tutorial, and you will be pretty good um, at be able to do everything. So let's go over. Let me just show you a couple little techniques now you can do. Uh, also with this renderer tab right here. Um, smoke. I mean, you can change that to all kinds of different colors. Um, a fire. A gradient also looks pretty good. Let's go over to key mode. I have a couple of gradients people have actually sent me. Um, and I will put them in the description for your download. Let's see. If I can go to it, front fractals, human effects, color grads. There we go. Um, so let's just try this one, a normal flame one. Um, as you see, it op openly updates in the little simulation tab. You don't really need to worry about resimming the whole thing again. Um, so like, there's some different ones. There's an intense fire. So this would be pretty much really strong fire. Um, let's see what that looks like it renders. I think that might render pretty cool. Not too sure. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me right. Now, also, there's other things. If you really know your 3ds Max, you can use other render programs to render out your footage such as V-Ray or Krakatoa um, and yeah if you want more like advanced tuts uh, tutorials on fume effects please let me know in the description I, there's a lot of stuff you can do with fume effects there's really a lot of stuff um, so let's see this is explosion firefall flames let's just do one flames one and Alright, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna render out one I, I really like. One uh, footage, one frame I like. I'm not gonna completely render all this out. So, I mean, also another thing was why it's taking so long to send uh, my footage set at 1920 by 1080. This is some PC footage. Didn't mean to click that. Uh, unselect that shit. Alright, so we can go all the way down to render output. I'm just going to click on files, and go to projects, presets, tutorials, commentary, tutorial text on fire, and then render. And then we're going to put it as a PNG. If I can find it. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Where is PNG? It's probably right in front of me. There we go. It was. So then I'm going to hit save. And then we're gonna just use that and then make sure alpha channel select hit okay. Alright, alright, looks good. Um, I just want a single frame, close that, close that, close that. And then we're gonna click on render setup. Oh not render setup. Um render production. And it's basically gonna render it real quick. It doesn't look pretty bad. And pretty much what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm just gonna show you a little bit of compositing and with an After Effects of like some color correction stuff you can use to pretty much bring up. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, I know it's not perfect. Yeah, this is a rough tutorial. I pretty much just showed you guys. Um, I showed you guys basically all the not really essentials. But I showed you guys a lot of the like. How do I explain this? I showed you guys the all the settings you can use to pretty much make it. So now what you guys can do is go around, play with it. Yes, I actually do manual work, um, and that's just something that's something that's been going on a lot right now is people overtaking tutorials and then just they're using tutorials in a bad way uh, by just completely copying an editor's work 
Um, I'm hoping you guys understand what I mean about that. So I'm just bringing in the JPEG sequence and make sure we're framed that we're in there. 452. Uh, and you go to 452 right here. That's control click and then bring it to 452. All right, I want to just come there. Um, now, obviously, you would be doing this. I'm just doing this right now because I want the same frame for the whole thing. And bring my the footage in. There we go. So, some stuff you can do. Um, let's make some 16 by 9 widescreen bars. So, let's just type in widescreen bars. Um, make them black. Okay. Now, the way I do it is pretty much I type in height. A height below that resolution. So this is 1920 by 1080. Um, which is 1080p resolution. So we're gonna go all the way down to 1280 by 720 at 1080p uh, resolution. So I'm just gonna type in 720 and hit OK. Now I'm gonna come here, right click, mask, new mask, hit M. Then I'm gonna click on the mask, hit Control C. All right, now go to layer, solid settings, make comp size. Hit OK. Now you can click Control V to paste it. You can delete the first mask. Hit M, invert it. Voila. That's just my way of doing it. I'll probably do it more complicated, but oh well. Now I'm going to get to my adjustment layer. I'm going to make a color correction. I'll make two color corrections. I'll make one on the actual clip itself. And then I'm going to make one on the actual layer itself. So let's go to render. Um, let's go to levels. Here I can increase the whites to the blacks. Um, so I can like this, darken it up, darken like this. I can increase a little bit of that whiteness in it. Uh, I mean, you can pretty much do a complete layer and then increase the saturation of uh, the levels all the way up and make it look like it's smoking. Let's see, I don't want to increase it too much. No, how would it? It looks good enough like that. Um, so, other stuff you can use is brightness and contrast. Um, like, let's increase the contrast to 10. That looks good. And I'm bringing down the brightness to like 10. And there you go. That kind of just really makes the contrast stand out and everything like that. Um, most of our stuff you need curves. If you really want to like highlight some of like the red parts, want to make the red parts boost up a little bit. Like that. Maybe you have a really like, or make the green. Um, turn this around. Like really, there we go. A little too much red, but oh well. And then glow. Glow kind of helps with the fire and everything like that. Um, that's too much. Let's make the radius. Let's puff that up. And then make the group destroy. Mm -hmm. Like that. I'm going to drain on the intensity a little bit. So that looks pretty good like that. I mean, this is this ain't perfect and everything like that. I know it's not perfect. I'm really going for perfect. So that's the before. This is after all those color corrections. Now you can add your official overall color correction, which was good. Apply color correction. Uh, let me go to my projects. No more projects. Whatever. I'm just going to make a quick one. Let's get some mojo. Uh, let me just do something quick. Mojo 10. And. I don't know what I really want right here. That looks good. Let's warm it up a little bit. Punch it. And bleach it a little. That looks pretty cool. And then you can come there and do some curves. Oh, um, let's go with saturation. Q and saturation. Is that what it Yeah, you can really make that. But actually, what I normally do is, I come there, I use the normal clip, and I'm gonna bring the color correction up. Cause like all the colors are really dull right now, I can bring the hue and saturation up, and you know, really make some good stuff. Um, for after, everything just has color now. It's pretty much just all the difference. And then now, that looks good. Um, Couple other techniques. Let's do looks, color correction, edit. 
And I think it's under lens. I'm trying to find, yeah, edge focus. Alright. And bring that out, actually. Um, the further distance apart from. Bring it to scale, right? The further this part is from the center, is the more of a. What you call it? It gives it more of a. Um, feather. And then we turn the quality up all the way to 10. There we go. And then now you can just mess with the blur sauce. It's 2 2 right there. I'm gonna really settle one. And there we go. Um, now, if your file wasn't a still image, it was actually a moving image like mine, you would definitely put some RS, RSMB on it. Um, put on the render itself itself. And then start off with something really small like 1 and motion sympathy 100. It's going to be a difference, but like there's nothing moving right now, so it's not going to really affect it. Um, and yeah, and then there we go. That gives you some really good looking cinematic. Um, as you see, the fire looks really lively and everything like that. Um, we start off with this, and we end up with that. So, yeah, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. I'm probably going to split some parts up um, and move around and everything like that because this is a 50 minute upload. I don't think too many people are going to watch it. So, yeah, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, thank you, Fuse, for these all these new backgrounds, arts, arts, and everything like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for this, for supporting me in this tutorial. Also, thank you, everyone, who also supported me also in, God, I just said a lot of also's, in um, New Year's edit I did. But yeah, remember to like, comment, subscribe, share it around. I don't really know who, what channels it's going to be separated on. Um, but yeah, thank you for your time. Hope you have a great time learning this tutorial. And hope you do some really cool effects with it and everything like that. And really get some good outcomes. And if you need any help, message me on YouTube. and I will, Or no, Twitter. Hit me up on Twitter. It's the best place to message me. And I'll help you out with whatever you need. That's it, guys. Peace.